Why does everyone forget zinc? Everyone's so focused on potassium and magnesium and man, I'll tell you, zinc is one of the most important minerals, if not the most important when it comes down to just cellular function. Okay, it is one of the most prevalent minerals in the body, but we don't have a storage system for it. So what that means is that we end up having to constantly replenish our zinc levels. So it's very easy to become deficient in zinc and it can cause a cascade of different problems. Now, what it does do is manifest in some pretty clear ways. So we'll explain those deficiencies and all that so that you know if maybe you need to start adding some zinc in. We'll also talk about some foods that are going to be rich in zinc and how much zinc you might want to be getting in. All right, so we're going to talk all about that. But first, I want to make sure you hit that red subscribe button and also hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications so you know whenever I go live or post a new video, which is pretty much just about every single day at 7.30 a.m. Pacific time these days. All right, so first of all, why zinc is so unique? It promotes thousands and thousands of transcription factors and enzymatic functions within the body. Okay. Okay, now most of the time minerals are involved in some or part of these transcription factors. Now what that means is basically the creation of new cells and things like that. Now normally magnesium is involved in a few, then you got potassium involved in a few. Well, zinc is involved in all six enzymatic classes. So what that means is that every kind of enzyme function in your body, whether it's breaking down food or whether it's breaking down certain cellular functions or whether it's triggering the growth of new cells and things like that, different enzymatic functions, zinc is involved in all of them. And in case you don't understand the magnitude of that, we cannot function without enzymatic functions happening at some point. So they're involved in ligases, lyases, hydrolases, isomerases, oxidoreductases, and transferases, which has to do with even uh, genetics, right? Actually like changing our DNA and changing things like that. That's very important. What I said earlier, no ability to store zinc. We don't have this a storage mechanism for zinc. So what we have in our body, in our blood, or in our cells at a given time is what we have. It's why it's very important to replenish your zinc levels every day, whether it's through supplementation or through good food. Okay, if you go and you get a blood test and you find that your zinc levels are high or low, it's not necessarily going to reflect anything that matters because it doesn't tell you what is being utilized by the cell at that point in time. You see, if your zinc levels are high it, in your blood, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that your cells are utilizing that zinc and that you actually have good amounts of zinc in your body. So it's always good to replenish zinc. Now, the caveat being, if you take in too much zinc and you go overboard, it depletes and cancels out copper. That's when things get wild with minerals. You start taking in too much zinc, it actually cancels out some of the copper, which creates its own signs and its own symptoms, which we'll talk about in another video. But let's talk about some telltale things because otherwise we're gonna sit in la-la land where it's super complicated. All right, the first symptom that I wanna talk about, this is kind of in order of what you might see manifesting. The first symptom is going to be hair loss. Okay, here's what's going on. Hair cells and hair follicles and that whole process, it, they turn over really fast. So whenever you have something that's turning over fast, you're having a big demand in zinc because zinc is required in that turnover, creating new cells, new enzymatic functions. So anything that turns over really fast is gonna burn through zinc like crazy. So what's happening is, when you're zinc depleted, your hair starts to fall out or starts to thin simply because you have other cells that require zinc that turn over fast. So let me put it like this. Hair cells regenerate fast immune cells regenerate fast, intestinal cells regenerate fast, but hair is not a priority. So what ends up happening is the zinc deficiency makes it so that your body prioritizes the immune cells and the intestinal cells and says, okay, we have to shuttle zinc away from the hair and put it to the immune cells because that's where they're needed. So as a result, you start losing your hair. So if you're you know, brushing your hair in the morning and you just have clumps of hair coming out, not even clumps, you just notice it's thinning and coming out, zinc could be an issue and just a little bit of supplemental zinc could fix that. Or adding some oysters or some shellfish into your diet could make a big difference there. Which kind of leads me to the next thing. Maybe if you don't like oysters or shellfish, you want your taste to go away. But in this particular case, this is a symptom of zinc deficiency. So same kind of thing with our taste buds. Our taste buds have a short half-life. Believe it or not, our taste changes every one to two weeks. So what happens is your taste buds, the cells in there die and they go through a kind of new recycling process every one to two weeks, which explains why if you eat spicy foods for about a week, you get used to it. Okay, you develop a sweet tooth or a salt tooth or a spicy uh, affinity just in a matter of weeks time. But the same kind of thing happens here. If you're deficient in zinc, your body's reprioritizing and sacrificing for the greater good of the rest of your body, your immune cells and you know, your intestinal cells and things like that. So it's taking zinc away from the cells in your taste buds and moving them to other more important places. So these two, although 
are critical for most life, they're not super critical compared to immune cells and intestinal cells. So that's where we really have to start paying attention. These are the first warning signs. And I wanna stop right there because you might be wondering where you can get zinc in food. Like you might be looking at this saying, okay, well this is great, I already have these symptoms. Where can I get some food? So, okay, we've got things like oysters, Okay, we've got other shellfish. Those are always going to be a good sign. You've got some things like seaweed, and they're gonna have levels of zinc. Anything kind of marine base is going to have a good amount of zinc. Uh, there's a lot of vegetables that have zinc, but unfortunately, a lot of times our soil is so deprived of the minerals, we're not actually getting that amount. So what I've done is I've created some grocery packages through Thrive Market. Thrive Market's an online grocery store, so you can get your groceries online, not have to go to the grocery store, they just get shipped right to your doorstep. I've created specific packages for keto, for fasting, for thyroid, for hormones, Every Everything like that so you can get groceries that I would recommend all bundled into a simple box. So it's like, hey, this is what Tom Stelauer would get for minerals, for thyroid health, for hormone health, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a link down below in the description. That way you can check them out. And they also utilize Wild Planet, which is a really good canned fish and canned shellfish source. So a good way for you to be able to get your oysters in if you like them, stuff like that. So anyhow, link down below in the description. Check it out after you watch the rest of this video. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about the next one, which is going to be muscle loss and weight loss. You might be wondering, I want to lose weight. Well, you're going to probably lose the wrong kind of weight. If you're having a hard time putting on muscle or you feel like you're just atrophying and losing a lot of muscle, same kind of thing, okay? It comes down to the intestinal cells. At this point, zinc deficiency is starting to affect the intestinal cells. So it's prioritizing the immune cells and it's getting rid of the intestinal cell turnover because you're deficient in zinc, which means that now you have a leaky gut, so you have more inflammation, but you also have cells that aren't functioning as well, which means they're not able to absorb nutrients as well, which means you lose the good kind of weight. You lose the weight that you shouldn't be losing, the weight that you should be keeping on because your body's deprived of nutrients. So if you feel like, what the heck, I'm doing everything I can, I'm losing my hair, my taste is, is lame right now, and I'm losing muscle, you're probably dealing with a zinc deficiency. Okay, then we get into illnesses as we've gone down the line. Okay, you're kind of seeing the pattern here, right? You're seeing the chain reaction? Okay, cells that turn over fast in areas of the body that require fast cell turnover are going to end up seeing the result of a zinc deficiency much faster. So if you cannot create new immune cells, your immune system suffers, plain and simple. Next up, we have diarrhea. The thing is, there's not a whole lot of understanding as to why people that are zinc deficient get diarrhea so much. Now, the issue is once the diarrhea starts, then you're losing more minerals, so then you lose more zinc, and then you really have to replenish it. And everyone talks about replenishing sodium, potassium, magnesium, but no one's talking about replenishing zinc, which is one of the most important ones to replenish, okay? Now, I have my own hypothesis. I think that what's happening is it's a bacterial thing, and I think it's a chelation thing. So what that means is you're probably having diarrhea because you have excess of one particular mineral, probably too much iron, that's chelating excess minerals in the body and in the gut, and it's causing oxidation, which is making you feel sick. Now, the point is there is you could reduce your iron levels, but that's pretty hard to do. The best way to reduce your iron levels, long story short, is to actually add magnesium into the mix alongside zinc. But that's complicated and I have other videos on that. We don't need to worry about it right now. Okay, last but not least, libido and testosterone. Zinc is so critical for testosterone production. There's a lot of reasons why, but I want to reference one particular study. It was published in the journal Nutrition back in 1996. Took a look at test subjects and it had them go on diets that were low in zinc. So basically they slowly made them uh, limit their zinc intake, whether it be through they were supplementing before, now they're not, or they're just limiting zinc foods. Pretty wild. Okay, so they found that they had a progressive decrease in serum testosterone levels as they decrease zinc. In fact, after two months, they had half the testosterone level that they had before. After five months, they had a quarter of the testosterone level they had before. Okay, just by limiting their zinc intake. Okay, so it crushed their testosterone and crushed their libido. Then with some older populations, they did another test where they supplemented a little bit of zinc and they found that it doubled their testosterone in just six months by adding zinc. Really powerful stuff. So how much zinc should you be getting in per day? Okay, so recommended daily allowance is like 10 milligrams. That's really not that much. I would say you could go up to 40 before you start to have some kind of issue with potential uh, copper canceling out. I honestly think you could go higher than that. And it all depends on how high your testosterone levels are, uh, how much cellular turnover you have. If you're working out a whole lot, you're breaking down cells a lot, which means that you might be breaking down or requiring more zinc for that cell turnover. Every time that you're putting your body in high demand for anything, uh, you're gonna turn over more zinc, okay? So like you're eating a lot, then of course you're going to have a lot of intestinal cell turnover. You just have to increase your zinc whenever you can feel that your body has to increase cellular turnover. When you're sick, 
okay, when you're working out a lot, things like that. So I hope that this helps you out, okay? So you can get the zinc rich foods in, you can supplement some zinc at 10 to 20 milligrams per day, and you can pay attention to make sure that these symptoms aren't getting too bad in your own body so you know when you can start implementing more zinc. So as always, please keep it locked in here on my channel. Thank you again, and also check out Thrive Market again down below in the description. See you soon.